Here's the clinical um, dimensional type thing. I showed you the biological animal model, you know, um, harm avoidance type thing. This is more clinical, what you see on the outside, the morphina type. So Soloff's model, when you're dealing with particularly the borderline personality patient, or I'd say any personality disordered patient, is their main issue cognitive perceptual. Paranoia, transient psychosis, derealization, dissociation. Uh, maybe even inability to, to focus, concentrate, pay attention. If you see that, that's cognitive perceptual. Affective, you know, dysphoric, mood negative states, you know, depression, anxiety, um, and then impulsive behavioral. I'm gonna hit somebody, I'm gonna cut myself, I'm gonna act out, throw things. Uh, that would be more of that category. So when you're interviewing somebody outside of the DSM list, try to get a handle through their stories of the people they deal with and the lives they lead, where they fall on this particular continuum. When you do this, pick an outcome, pick a measurement. Um, do any of you have the experience where your patients, particularly borderline patients, just accumulate medicines? Yeah, you start out with one or two, then it's five, six, seven, eight, and they say each one works, but their GAF score is still the same, it's still a 50. They haven't gone back to work, they still have you know, six admissions to the hospital per year. So I, I always say pick a measurement. If you wanna use a SCID2 or a rating scale, do it. If not, did they cut less? Did they overdose less? Did they go to the hot, come up with some kind of measurement and stick to it? Like anything else, if the drug doesn't work, start getting rid of it. So when you use this kind of dimensional approach, you gotta come up with a measurement and follow it through, or they will collect medications. I'm also a fan of the N equals one study. That's you and your patient. It's an experiment of one person. So individualized treatment. Get rid of old medicines that don't work. Do not medicate interpersonal crises. Right, you get a call, patient looks uh, manic or hysterical, you wanna give uh, an anxiolytic, uh, either manic, you wanna put another mood stabilizer, double the, the Dival Pro-X. Listen to the story first. If you can talk them down or if the therapist can, why are you gonna add an extra medication? So another part of this approach is don't fall into treating multiple adjustment disorders with medications, all right? If you detect an AXIS-1 condition, we showed you 50% of the time they're there, you do have to aggressively treat those, but delineate with your patient. Here's your depression that I'm treating, and here's your abandonment fear in your cutting that I'm treating. And I'm using one medicine for this and the other one for that. Let's measure each thing. 